I remember Husky. Like they had yeah. to get me the Husky size. That was, that was the that was the nice way of calling it for the fat kids, right? Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Squad Room. In today's episode, we're going to talk with Eric Malzone. Uh, we've heard from Traver Bohm in the past, and Eric is Traver's business partner. Uh, they own and are the head coaches at CrossFit Pacific Coast and at Gravitas Performance Labs, where I am undergoing this training scenario or this training regimen that we are documenting. Um, Eric is a programming geek, and we'll define programming, but we'll also uh, get into, more importantly, today's topic of how to pick a coach and the importance of having a coach. And I think you'll see as we go through these episodes like we had with uh, Greg Amundsen in uh, episode three, uh, even someone like him has a coach. We all need coaches. We all have people that we should be looking to, whether you call them a mentor uh, or a coach or whatever it is, we all need those people in our lives. And we talk about how to find a coach more specifically in the fitness realm. Uh, but Eric talks about the fact that he's got a coach and uh, how he built his team of people. Um, and that's something that I'm currently working on is how to build a team. So uh, let's start with him. Uh, please uh, send us a review on iTunes if you are enjoying the show. And even if you're not, send us an honest one. Let us know how we can improve. Uh, we appreciate the support. Uh, leaving a review on iTunes really helps us out and helps us uh, get a, get some get the word spread uh, on our show. You can follow us on Twitter at The Squad Room uh, and also on Instagram at The Squad Room. Our website, of course, is thesquadroom.net where there's show notes for today and every episode. There's links to resources that are related and uh, other stuff to help you out, blog posts on uh, related subjects. Also, uh, you can uh, uh, check out or email us, sorry, email us at um, our email address, which is squadroompodcast at gmail.com. All right, so here's Eric. Eric, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks here for at having the me. Squadroom. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, in the intro, I described a little bit about you uh, and your uh, relationship to this project, but why don't you, uh, why don't you give everybody a, a rundown of your athletic background and, and your history and, and how you got to the table we're sitting at today? Yeah, uh, well, it's a, you know, it's a long, storied trip, but I, uh, my athletic background, I have been, and I, I counted these numbers uh, when you sent me some questions, <laughs> I've been a com uh, a competitive athlete for 33 years, which now blows my mind. So I started, um, actually got into swimming at the age of five, right? I was uh, asthmatic as a kid. So my mom got me into swimming. I took to it very quickly, um, and started swimming in meets immediately. And from that point, you know, I, I really never stopped doing anything in competition. I really liked it. And, uh, I think I got into my brother was the one who I started, you know, I swam for a long time and I honestly didn't dig it. Right. Following a black line <laughs> all day long. Um, and I was also a, a chubby kid for a little while. So Husky, I prefer, husky. I prefer that we, <laughs> we, we refer to it. Yeah. Yeah. And remember actually the, I shopped in the Husky section, so I should know that. we're about the same age. Remember in JC Penney's when they used to have the yeah. paper catalogs Yeah, like for all you kids before the internet, there were actually these catalogs where yeah. they would, you could order you could order your clothes through the catalog and my parents would do this. They'd go yeah. to JC Penney's and they had the phone over at JC Penney's that you'd pick up and you'd order from the catalog. Right. Yeah. And I, they always, <laughs> I remember Husky, like they had yeah. to get me the Husky size. That was, <laughs> that was the, that was the nice way of calling it for the fat kids. Right. Yeah. I would have preferred when we had shop for uniforms <laughs> for school. It was, uh, I'm like, mom, you know, I want, I want these, I want these pants. No, honey, no, you have to shop and let's go in the Husky section. <laughs> That's where we are. I'm like, Oh man, that's brutal. Mom. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I, 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 uh, I was a Husky kid. So I, you know, getting into a speedo every day was, you know, um, very encouraging to, to drop some weight. Um, that's beside the point. So when I got to about the age of 12, I didn't, I wasn't big into swimming. My brother said, Hey, you should try water polo. So I went to a summer camp and, uh, really liked it. Really, really dug it. And that springboarded me into a career that was, um, probably about 18 to 20 years long. So I played all the way through high school. Uh, went to college, um, uh, played there, and then I uh, played for a master's club up in the San Francisco area for about six years, seven years after school, and uh, and then I, I found CrossFit, and that was uh, probably overlapped for about a year or two, 
And since then it's been, gosh, I guess seven or eight years since I started the sport and, uh, absolutely love it. And you and you and Traver met uh, for anyone who's listening to this episode first before some of the other ones. Traver is my, uh, personal coach, Mm -hmm. uh, from Gravitas. He's your partner in Gravitas Performance Labs and in CrossFit Pacific Coast coach coast CrossFit Pacific Coast. That's a (laughs) mouthful if you say it fast. (laughs) You guys met. Uh, at school, right? You were, right. weren't you both on the water polo team together? Yeah, we were both on the water polo and swim team together. Uh, that's how we met. And, uh, I learned this when I, when I moved here. Uh, but also I actually, I grew up with someone who was a bit of a mentor to me, who was actually a water polo, water polo player too, uh, from Thousand Oaks who actually had been on, I think it was the 88 Olympic team mm. as a goalie for the water polo team. And he was a, uh, goalie at Stanford as well. So I, I got a hint of how big water polo is in California, but yeah. I really didn't understand it. It's like lacrosse is to an East coaster. Right? Yeah. It's huge. here. Yeah. You nailed it. it that's exactly um, when I went, I played actually, you know, we went to school college in the East coast and um, no one really knew what water polo was similarly to very few people know what lacrosse is here, but it's very popular on both sides, you know, uh, opposite. Yeah. And that's exactly how I describe it. It's like the lacrosse of West coast. Yeah. It's hugely popular, mm-hmm. extremely competitive. Mm-hmm. High school programs here are highly competitive. Yep. Um, so yeah, you were, you've been performing at those elite levels for a long time. What, uh, what were you doing before you found CrossFit? Yeah. Before I did, before I, started CrossFit. Um, <clears throat> I was living in San Francisco, um, just doing, you know, the, the normal post-college, um, trying to figure out my life, what I want to do with my career. And, uh, I was, um, playing water polo. So two nights a week plus tournaments on the weekends, uh, most of the time. And then I had the normal gym membership, you know, I was doing the, uh, you know, looking in the magazines for a good bodybuilding, um, routine or whatever we thought strength programming was mm-hmm. in, you know, the nineties, early two thousands. And, uh, that was it, man. I was just, you know, going in, I had chest, chest and shoulders. And then I had buys and tries, buys and tries, <laughs> man, no leg day, no leg day. <laughs> no uh, so, you know, I, and before that, uh, you know, I'd always had a coach, you know, through high school and college, we always a coach who would give us our strength and conditioning program. I didn't, you know, I paid attention to it, but you really just kind of thoughtlessly went through it. Mm-hmm. And that was, the, that was the point. You had a coach who told you what to do. So, you know, um, very masculine in that role. If someone told me what to do, I do it. And, uh, that was it. So, uh, what prompted you to go into, uh, a CrossFit gym mm-hmm. a box? Uh, and what, what were your first thoughts? Yeah. So finally, you know, Traver, um, had been bugging me, um, about CrossFit for a while and telling me I should do it. I kept looking at their website, CrossFit.com, and thinking, God, this stuff looks crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know this is what I want to be doing. And uh, it was, you know, they say that things kind of have to happen three times before you actually bite on it. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was thinking, you know, I was trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. So I started testing for fire departments. And uh, through that testing, I'm like, God, oh, these people are, and this is when, you know, CrossFit was really starting to just emerge, and it was only certain groups of people are into it and uh, firefighters are one of them. Yeah. So when I went to uh, met with, you know, some people at the station, you say, you should get in shape, you should try, you know, you should do CrossFit. Uh, so I started doing it and then I had another friend or actually I started looking even more at it. And then I had another friend who joined a gym in San Francisco. And so that was the three pushes I need, I needed. So I started looking around there. I joined uh, the Lane Fitness, which is uh, Chris Lane, uh, Jack Lane's, um, I believe, nephew. And I went in there and, uh, I did the same intro that a lot of people have done, 500 meter row, 40 squats, 30 sit-ups, 20 push-ups, 10 pull-ups, and I was toast. I was absolutely toasted, and I loved it, signed up immediately, and uh, and started training. And it was, you know, this was, this was the good old days um, of CrossFit where we were just testing things out. You know, like programming was, uh, well, what should we do today? It wasn't like, okay, what are we going to do for the next month? It's mm-hmm. like, well, well, let's say we did Fran on Monday. Uh, so maybe we shouldn't do pull-ups. We'll do something with deadlifts and box jumps, you know? And it was just, every day it was just a bloodbath Yeah, and it was great. Wasn't the safest <laughs> way to do it. Um, we've learned a lot since then, but it was, it was a lot of fun, man. It was yeah. really good. That eventually brought you, uh, down here where yeah. Traver, uh, convinced you to, uh, move down here and, and open up your own gym together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now you're, uh, it's cool. You're, 
Yeah, it didn't take much convincing. (laughs) It was a text message. It's not hard to get people to move here. (laughs) Yeah, it was a text message of, hey, would you be interested in opening a gym? And I thought about it. I laughed a little at first. And then I, two hours later, I was like, yeah, yeah, where do we want to do it? So we started researching where we'd want to do it Mm -hmm. in California. Um, We looked at places that we found desirable to live in. Um, You know, uh, I was looking at some spots in Northern California, including Lake Tahoe. Santa Barbara was a big fan, uh, big favorite of Traver. And uh, we just looked and there wasn't any, you know, Santa Barbara was um, was ripe for the picking for, you know, Mm -hmm. a a CrossFit gym. There wasn't anything. This was the wild, wild west of CrossFit. People were just staking claims wherever they could. And Santa Barbara was a claim that we saw open and and we went down there. There was there is a gym CrossFit Santa Barbara that was here as well. Um, But they were just doing it out of their garage at the time. Yeah, it it definitely seemed, uh, you know, you said firefighters are were early adopters of CrossFit, but so were uh, police for sure. Yep. And that's how I learned about it originally through some of my partners. Um, but yeah, when I went out and looking for resources, I, it was the, their website, the HQ website. There wasn't much else. There wasn't anything in town really um, initially. And then all of a sudden you were here yeah. and then CrossFit Santa Barbara. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's nice that there's now a, a, a real community about it. <laughs> I'll preface something too that uh, though we are obviously talking heavily about CrossFit and that's your area of expertise and that's what i choose to do for mine i i've given this disclaimer before that this podcast project isn't about crossfit itself right. um it's just about uh finding what works for you mm-hmm. and using that and going with that and uh using that to achieve whatever their whatever your other goals are right i mean yeah. so so for both of us here for people listening both of us at the sitting at this table that happens to be crossfit but if it is i mean we we kind of chuckled about the buys and tries days but if that's mm-hmm. what you're into man I don't, you know go forth yeah, absolutely. You know, the best people ask, you know, what's the best workout? Well, the best workout's one that you're actually going to do. Right. right? So uh, that's the key. And, you know, I, I would preface even more what you're saying by saying that, you know, I, I um, do not necessarily consider myself a CrossFit coach. I consider myself a strength and conditioning coach who teaches CrossFit, mm-hmm. uses CrossFit as a tool for strength and conditioning. As your method. Yeah. yeah. Or one of the methods. You know, mm-hmm. we have some people in our gym, you know, in the Gravitas room that just do bodybuilding. We have people who are... Um, you know, weight loss, or we call them fat loss clients who just do basic bodybuilding routines. Cause that's the best thing for them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we're, you know, yes, we drank the Kool-Aid. We love, we love CrossFit. I love CrossFit. I love the sport. Um, I care about it deeply, but, um, I'm very open to all the traditional, you know, methods of training and we don't, um, we don't alienate at all. You know, we love it all. Yeah. Well, you guys have definitely brought in different people since you've opened up the kind of private training aspect of the gym. So, um, probably a good time to get right into that because that's brought up some, uh, like I said, it's brought in different people, like you mm-hmm. just said. Um, and I, the whole point of this episode is for people to, to help them on how to pick a coach or how mm-hmm. to pick a gym. Yeah. Um, so maybe the easiest thing to do, uh, is we talk about programming. Can you explain to people what programming is mm-hmm. and, um, what, how they may see that? And that's going to certainly come up in our, in our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Program design, um, in the area of, of fitness, um, uh, strength and conditioning, it's a huge, man, it's a huge topic, right? <clears throat> um, you know, the reason I got into program design was really out of necessity. I think, uh, you know, when Trevor and I first opened the gym, you know, whatever, six or seven years ago, we divided our tasks up very simply, right? It was mm-hmm. like, all right, well, Trevor, why don't you do the blog and I'll write the workouts, right? And little did I know when I took over the workout writing that it was going to become such a big thing. You know, I think program design and, and the re-entry, you know, CrossFit has re has given program design a, a rebirth of some sort where mm-hmm. people are really starting to get into it. And what it means is simply, it's just laying out a plan, you know, it's laying out a plan for someone, um, getting them from point A to point B, um, as quickly and safely as possible. And, uh, that's it. I think that's the, the best summary of it. It's just a plan. Yeah. And, and that's not unique to to CrossFit. I mean, you, no, it's not like you get the old school barbell guys like Louis oh, yeah. Simmons or Mark Ripito mm-hmm. or even your 24 hour fitness trainer should all Everybody be writes programming programs. for you. Right. You walk into 24 hour fitness and if you have a trainer and he gives you a, uh, an objective for the day, that's, that's programming. Right? right. Okay. Right. On that too, we talk about maybe we use the, the, the lingo of a traditional gym or uh, CrossFit calls them global gyms. Yeah. Yeah. But, so that obviously we mean like 24 hour fitness or right. a spectrum or gold's gym or any of those. Um, you have a unique challenge. I mean, you, a lot of 
CrossFit programming coaches do. You, how do you program for 200 plus people that are members of your gym? Man, it, um, it's tough. You know, I, uh, it's one of those things. I don't know where, you know, this quote came from, but the, the master envies the confidence of the novice, (laughs) right? So as you, as you learn more, uh, the more I want to pull my hair out when it came to group, you know, program design. So, um, it's just tough. You know, the best thing you can do with group program design for a group of 200 plus people like we have is just, um, do no harm rule number one. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, just keep people moving along in a continuum, provide them with opportunities to grow. And, uh, that's the best thing we can do for them is, you know, give them safe programming, responsible programming. Um, and then make sure that we're offering them an opportunity to move from one level to the next, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. you know, meeting them exactly where they are and providing the next step forward. And that's, that's the thing. And it's, it's challenging, you know, it takes a lot of thought. Um, yeah, that's, that's you said, you said something just now that's kind of interesting to me that I've experienced before, uh, meeting them where they're at. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that, we may have just uh, finished the episode right, right here and there with that, <laughs> with that issue because yeah. uh, having tried personal training before in a traditional gym sense, that seems to be the people's biggest external struggle. I mean, there's a lot of internal struggles when you're dealing with trying to get in shape and all that. But mm-hmm. one of the things when they go out for help is, uh, is finding a trainer who will meet you where you're at. Yeah. Cause I have several times, you know, it's, either it's a new gym and you get a free session or it's a new gym and uh, you know, New Year's resolution, you want to try something new. So you go in and you, you hire the trainer and you're working on their program mm-hmm. of what they want to do, right? not yours. Right. And I remember several sessions being like, I don't think this is safe or I don't think this is, is he trying to kill me or is he really trying to, to get me moving because he seems to be five steps ahead of where I actually am. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, that seems to be such a big a big issue. Yeah. So finding a finding a coach who will meet you where you're at, and we talked about that uh, with Trevor in a different episode of of really being honest about where you're at, and that starts with me or mm-hmm. one of our listeners being honest about where you're at, and then being uh, well honest with yourself, and then honest with your coach, right? Be like kind of laying it all out there. Yeah, yeah. E- a, a ego kick to the nads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It's uh, oh but, man. But yeah. you need to start where you, if you don't start, this sounds stupid. If you need to start, if you don't start where you're at and you start where someone else is at, you're not, you're not going to do anything or you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think a very honest assessment um, by the coach and the client is huge. You know, I, when we talk about going from point A to point B, everyone knows their point B, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone knows where they want to go. Uh, do people have a realistic understanding of where point A is? Usually not. And sometimes it may take a little while for people to really be open to where that is. And, uh, you know, I remember I had a client, you know, in our early days at the gym who was so disappointed because he did a 14 minute Fran. And for people who don't know what I'm talking about, that's 21, 15, nine thrusters, pull-ups. It's a, it's a very, um, uh, utilized workout in CrossFit and standard. And, uh, he's like, well, I don't understand. I shouldn't be doing a 14 minute Fran. I should be at five minutes. I'm like, well, let's take a couple steps back and look at realistically. Okay. Yeah. You can do that. You can achieve that, but let's look at where you really are. You know, where you really are is 14 minutes. So let's take, you know, why is that? And it was tough on, you know, as a male, mm-hmm. tough on his ego, right? Yeah. Um, and you have to do it as softly as possible. Uh, but or gentle. Or gentle. Us male egos. Are <laughs> yeah, we are, fragile. man. Hey, man. <laughs> uh, you've done both the traditional gym and the CrossFit gym, and now yeah. you're obviously, you do the private coach, and uh, we'll get into the, building a team thing later, but what, what are your perspectives on, uh, maybe the benefits of each or, uh, where you've seen, uh, yeah, just where you see the benefits of each one, a uh, traditional gym versus a, uh, yeah, like versus a, like CrossFit. A, I mean, like yeah. to me, um, like a traditional gym, you might have things that, are, I mean, are, yeah, there, I don't think there's a CrossFit box out there that has a swimming pool. So right. if, if you want to integrate swimming into your workouts, yeah. Maybe that's a reason to join a traditional gym. Yeah, I think that's a great reason. I mean, when I look at a traditional gym, um, you know, I, my wife and I even looked at joining one recently just because of the amenities. I mean, I love, I would love to have a pool. I would yeah. love to play some hoops, you know. Um, I, I love a good sauna. I like to sweat it out. You know, all those things are great. Uh, you know, I think if you really want to dial into your fitness or look at a good strength and conditioning program, you want to find 
things that are um, look minimalist, you know, as as in a, a, a CrossFit gym. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, I was at a really interesting summit a couple week ago, a couple weekends ago in San Diego, where there was a gentleman, um, Steve Maxwell, who did a, a talk on his first fifty years of fitness um, in the world of fitness, and he went back and we st- and they they even he went farther back than that, you know, like a hundred years, and you know, the gyms of the nineteen thirties, there was a, a painting or a, you know like a pencil drawing of a gym in the 30s <clears throat> you know what it looked like it had uh barbells dumbbells climbing ropes gymnastics equipment all of these things so it looked like a crossfit gym a modern day crossfit gym so when people say you know hey this is you know what is a traditional gym i would actually argue that crossfit gyms are a traditional gym and we lost our way somewhere in the 80s and 90s uh so yeah a long-winded answer but i think uh amenities are great love them you know i love all those things but if you want to dial into what it is to be truly fit um you know in a functional aspect a real life aspect of fitness then you want to go visit a crossfit gym um or something of that elk or or yeah a lot of gyms now are adopting some version of that calling it different functional functional fitness fitness, right with air quotes which is great i'm i'm all for it i love it well the more people that you know whether uh whether they, what are they, whatever they call it, mm-hmm. I, um, I'm a I'm a firm believer. After doing this for a couple of years, uh, half heartedly, but now re- recently very seriously, that uh, focusing on function and the, your ability your ability to function in your daily life, right? Um, that's the reason to 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 stay in shape, right? But to be the ability to pick up my kids without throwing out my back or going to work right. and wearing uh, 36 pounds of gear all right. day without getting to the age of 55 and being broken down like a former pro football player, you know, right. Those are, those are important things. So anything that, you know, I think I agree with you. Anything that's got that, those basic things, I mean, the the barbells, the dumbbells, like you say, it's not the contraption where you strap your feet in and you do hip abductors, you know, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. that's, that's really not going to get you anywhere. There's plenty of other ways to do that where you're actually being functional. Right. Um, but, you know, and then again, it all depends on someone's definition of fitness, right? Sure. What, what is it? You know, what is your, your definition of fitness is being able to get in and out of the police car, you know, without having your back hurt, pick up your kids. Someone else's definition of fitness may just be 30 minutes of jogging, you know, a couple times a week, just being able to be fit to do that task. Move, able to move. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so phew, big topic, man. We can get into Yeah, yeah, we can go down the rabbit hole on, <laughs> on that a lot. Um, <clears throat> what, as a, as a coach and an owner... What would your recommendations be for someone who does want to go into a CrossFit gym and mm-hmm. um, and and hasn't kind of drank the Kool Aid yet or dipped their toe in that water? What would you recommend they look for? Yeah, I would say um, go visit them all. You know, physically go into all of the gyms if you have an opportunity to um, you know try a class or at least observe a class. Uh, go in there. You want to feel it. I mean, it's it. God, you know, it's, it's so hard to explain when we talk about community that, um, you know, what does that mean exactly? How do you talk about something that seems so intangible, but really going in and getting a feel for, is this the right group of people for me? Right. Mm-hmm. Fact of the matter is if you like the people at the gym, you're going to go to the gym, right? You're going to yeah. see success. Uh, so, um, you know, and then we can talk about after that, you know, okay, well, you can look at the program design. You can talk to the coaches, see if you feel that they're qualified or what you want to do. Talk to clients and see if they're getting the results that they want. See if they have, you know, dependent, totally dependent on what you want. You know, if you are someone who's looking to drop 30 pounds, right, you want to find out, hey, do they have a good nutrition plan mm-hmm. or nutrition counseling within that gym? Um, hey, I want to be a competitive CrossFit athlete. Well, do they have a good competitors program within that gym? Um, you know what, I'm just your, uh, average eight to five guy who doesn't, you know, not average, but your eight to five guy who, uh, I just want to, I want a stress release. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Is that the type of gym that it is? So each gym has its own unique identity. And, uh, just like you get along with certain people, you may not get along with certain gyms or you may love them. So it's really just a matter of getting into it and, and, uh, rubbing elbows a little bit and seeing if you like it. That's definitely been something I've seen is, uh, you know, you go to a 24 hour fitness and you know what you're. It, it is a, yeah. uh, it, it is the Mickey D's of fitness in the sense that there, are, you know what you're going to get, <laughs> like that. you know what equipment is going to be there, yeah. right? I mean, supersize me. You're getting, yeah. the, <laughs> you're getting a Big Mac. You know what you're getting, whether right. you're in Atlanta or you're in Seattle. Right. You go to a 24 hour fitness. Nothing wrong. I've been a member there before. Oh, me too. But you just know what you're getting. Yep. And CrossFit is so the boxes at CrossFit are so much more about the character of the owners. 
and the character of the of the membership that um, each one is quite a bit different. Yeah, I know when I came to you, my big issue was mobility, and uh, I was coming off that broken back from my bike accident, and I needed a lot of emphasis on mobility and very little emphasis on PRs or doing workouts as prescribed and a lot of scaling. Mm-hmm. So that was that was what I kind of came to you with. And I remember our conversation. I said, um, is this going to be a gym where you guys focus on mobility and uh, where I'm not going to get grief for not doing it as it says on the whiteboard? And I knew that was the case. And to, to me too, your gym, and a, a little tip I would say for anyone is how often and how good do they communicate with their members and for you guys it's your blog mm-hmm. right crossfitpacificcoast.com and there's a blog that comes up every day right where one of you or one of the coaches uh, puts down a thought or puts out a video or puts out a training tip or, or, or anything but there's a lot of communication there right. and <clears throat> there was a big emphasis on uh, mobility too stretching before and after the workouts using the foundations training mm-hmm. um, all those things so yeah that's that's how I knew I found my fit when um my my goals and your vision kind of aligned very easily. Great. Yeah, there were great. other gyms I I, I uh, went to where nothing wrong with them. They just didn't have that same emphasis that I needed. Right. Some were much more hardcore and would mo- undoubtedly make me strong. Um, but I was, you know, paramount to me was mobility. Right. And I learned a lot. Good. So um, you, you said you're not so – how did you say it? You're not so much a coach – you're a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, I'm not so much a CrossFit coach. CrossFit coach. Yeah, okay. I'm a strength and conditioning coach that does CrossFit. So maybe if you can try and uh, delineate between what a what, what you consider a personal trainer to be versus a coach, or is there a difference? Yeah. Um, well, once again, you know, it totally depends on a person's definition. But I think um, a coach will be more um, centered upon the process. Right, uh, a, a a personal trainer will be um, more set upon the task at hand. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, and not mutually exclusive, you can be a coach and a personal trainer, um, but it's the matter of the function that you're doing at that time. So a coach will see something, uh, a person, and will see the long term plan for that person. Right, mm-hmm. um, and usually um, within a coach's role, it's more growth development as a person. Mm-hmm. You know, not just, you know, the, the X's and O's. Okay. You know, did your biceps grow by this certain amount? Did you lose this much off your waistline, your body fat percentage, blah, 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 blah. But a coach, um, really likes to get roll up their sleeves and get into that person's life. Right. Usually yeah. most of the time, a uh, coach is going to ask more questions than provide answers because they want that person to, uh, answer it themselves. Right. And that's when, that's when things really start to happen is when a person comes to a conclusion of, Oh wow, that I just came out of my mouth. <laughs> that's what I actually want or that's mm-hmm. how I'm going to go approach things. A personal trainer um, is someone who probably in my mind just run someone through a workout. They okay, okay, you know, uh, notice that, you know, putting you through squats. Okay. Well, you're not, you know, you don't have a proper amount of dorsiflexion. So we're going to have to fix this with some mobility or, you know, Hey, you know, move your elbows this direction when you're doing this movement, whatever it is, they run you through those tasks at hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in my mind, that's the difference between the two is, you know, one is more process oriented. One is more task oriented and, uh, they can combine, they meet in the middle all the time. Sure. <clears throat> I think that's a good point though, that, uh, they ask more questions than they give answers to. And yeah. that's been my experience. Um, and that's helped me flush out some of those other issues. And it's also led to good discussions about the, the, the surrounding issues around, you know, uh, surrounding issues around fitness, like, you know, nutrition and sleep Mm -hmm. supplementation. Right. Um, I, you know, until this process, I'd have a hard time going to a trainer and asking about, you know, sleep tips or, uh, you know supplementation other than creatine and protein, bro. Sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. uh, the coach, yeah, the coach thing, uh, it's, it's almost hard to articulate to people like, mm-hmm. like to explain the difference. And, uh, I've, I've had discussions with people off mic about what I'm doing here and, you know, they, you know, scrunch their nose at, at the, at the difference or what, you know, what, what's a coach. And it, it really is, someone in a lot of ways like i mean to use a bad football analogy it's like that you know a head coach brings multiple people together 
to, to achieve a common goal. That's my off the cuff definition right there. Right. But, um, they organize all these other, these, all these different aspects of it, you know? Right. So if you think of yourself as one giant football team, <laughs> your nutrition is part of that team. Your sleep is part of that team. Your, your, uh, your workouts are part of that team. Your mental game is part of that team. Oh yeah, man. I love that. So, analogy. Yeah. So, but they're all within you, but a coach is really there to get those all aligned towards that common goal. Yep. And my experience in the past, the personal trainer thing is like you say, is more of a output based, right? You know, let's do this today. Keep your elbows in, right? Squat deeper, that kind of right. thing. Knees out. Heels yeah. Right. So coach. Yeah. The coach to me, uh, is, is, is a, is a real game changer, I guess yep. is, is probably the best way to say it. Good. Um, we did, we defined what a coach is. What is, um, probably like picking a gym, but what are your uh, suggestions on how to find a coach or how to pick a coach? Yeah. Uh, you know, a totally, once again, it would, it would, you know, if I had an example of what the person is and what they're looking for, I think I would provide a, a good answer to that, but it's, it's tough. You know, I think if, uh, you know, if my, my goal, my point in B is to, you know, like we said earlier, let that avatar of losing somebody who wants to lose 30 pounds, right? <clears throat> I would find somebody um, who you know has seen success in that area, you know, successful fat loss, and ask them, be like, hey, how did you do it? Uh, do you have a coach, right? And and seek out that person. You're going to mm -hmm. find a coach mostly by seeking it out because um, you will find them, you know. And if you're asking and you're looking and you're actively seeking, the, the universe has just have a way of, of bringing those two people together. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how people find us. I don't know how I found my coach. Um, I just know that at the right time I asked the right person and it was there, you know, I, I can't, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't even know I needed a coach really, to be honest with you until I found one that I really liked. And I just resonated with this person and I started reading his stuff and I started doing all these things. I'm like, God, you know, I really dig the way this person talks and speaks and the way they approach things. So, uh, that's a good time to get into it too, is even though you are a coach and mm -hmm. you've got people, uh, under your tutelage, you yourself have a coach. I do. Yep. What, uh, I mean, a lot of people would think you, you got a gym, you can, you do programming for other people. Um, you can work out whenever you want in theory anyway. Right. Um, why would you need a coach? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Dan John who says the, um, the attorney who represents himself has an idiot for a client. Right. I think everyone listening to this can understand, can relate to that and um, has experience with that. And, uh, you know, I just, me being who I am, I've always been, um, you know, an athlete. I've always had someone tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I can easily do that for somebody else. You know, I can, I can talk to them and figure out what they need and coach them. Um, for me, I need a coach and I think every person should have a coach pretty much all times of their life. There's no reason not to have a mentor. I put a huge value on mentorship. So, um, I have mentors in a lot of different aspects of my life, you know? And, uh, yeah, I couldn't, um, having that person when you run up against things, right. Um, to have that person you can, you can bounce things off of mm -hmm. is great. Sometimes, you know, like I said, maybe all that person needs to do is just listen and let you just vomit things out until the answer comes out of your own mouth, but at least you have that person to do it with. Sure. And you know what? I don't think my wife wants to be that person. <laughs> we, we, we've tried. I don't think it's healthy. No. Uh, so, uh, it's good to have that coach and, um, yeah, I, I value it all aspects. So, uh, what I hear there too is, um, you know, we just talked about p people finding themselves appropriately at their a point or their mm -hmm. starting point. Right. Um, so that's not unique to someone who is at a real, at, at the rock bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're at rock bottom and you need to start clawing your way back up towards fitness, you need to know where your A point is to get to B. But as someone who's been in a, an athlete at your level for over 30 years, like you say, you're still striving to improve, right? Yeah. Um, but that's, that's interesting that, you know, you still acknowledge that you have an A point too. Now your A point, at some point you achieved your B point, but if you want to make, if you want to keep improving, that becomes your A point again. Right. And you, you yeah. kind of start over with where you're going and, and 
as you progress, you're of course now C D E F G right. to stay with that idea. But um, knowing where you're at, that's that's cool that you uh, you see the value in that, but that you kind of understand where where you want to go and where you're at, and that there's someone out there having someone out there um, is is going to help you get there. Right. And mentorship that's that's another good word to use for for the kind of the coach and and there's yeah there's people need to we could do a whole <clears throat> series of podcasts just on the importance of mentorship not just in fitness but like you said every other part of your life you know a mentor and your relationship with your spouse or girlfriend or significant other and financial mentor and all those other things too i mean those are important yeah right? it's, it's all connected man it's all it's all connected yeah you know and if you don't, if you're not, if you're not open to the idea of mentors, or you could also call it maybe models, um, man, you're missing out. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of good to be had there. So, um, you have a coach, uh, and I don't know how else to kind of frame these questions without sticking with the sports analogy. But there's, you know, there's a coach. Um, I'm always curious, and I'm on this kick right now about. Um, teams and building a team around yourself yeah and a post uh uh, there's a post on the on the blog about building your team and how to start that process but i've started building quote unquote my team Um, but i'm curious if you have a team Mm -hmm. you've heard and how do you how did you pick them and what do you think are the are the important uh positions in that team to fill right away (sighs) man that's a great question and and uh when i originally started started a thought on this um i realized i have an army <laughs> nice. you know, really i was like geez man i got a lot of people in my corner and uh and was it by design you know did i go out and seek it i'm not some of them yeah you know obviously my wife is is my biggest uh you know one of my biggest teammates i have my coach um it's james fitzgerald um from uh, opex um you know, I have my business partner. I have my business team. You know, I have Jeff, our, our general manager. I have all of our coaches. I got our bookkeeper. I got our admin. I got that team going. Um, I have my family as a unit and my brothers, my sisters, my parents. Um, that's a team unit. Um, and then I have, you know, the people who keep me healthy. I got the sports med, you know, my doctor. I got my chiropractor, my masseuse, my, you know, mm-hmm. all these people that keep me functioning. I got my financial advisor. I even have a golf swing coach, you know? So, uh, you know, I guess it goes in line with, wow, I really, it's not just what I'm saying. I really do put a lot of value on mentorship and teams and things like that. Um, now how do you go about developing that team? I think it comes out of needs, you know, once you to see that, yo, wow, I have a need for, mm-hmm. for a good, um, sports med person to keep me active you know correct mm-hmm. the things that i'm doing wrong or um when you say sports med, do you, you mean a, an md a medical doctor yeah yeah well you know my guy in particular um he's here in town santa barbara it's dr holt he uh he's a chiropractor by trade but he's he does a lot of soft tissue work um so he just works with athletes mm-hmm. and he uh you know he knows he does a good job of quickly diagnosing something one of the things i love about him is he doesn't tell me to stop doing what i'm doing you know you go to a lot of doctors and like well maybe you should stop back squatting you know, 350 pounds and then you're, you know, whatever you won't hurt, mm-hmm. but well, that's not going to happen. So, <laughs> you know, this guy will tell you, Hey, all right, well, let's get you back on the track as soon as possible. Maybe mm-hmm. take tomorrow off and he'll get in and, and do some things that maybe are uncomfortable, uh, usually are uncomfortable and then get you back out there. So, um, so he's a chiropractor by trade. And, yeah. and I actually, I actually went to him, okay. uh, without talking to you about this beforehand or anything. Uh, I found him because of a back strain I had. And I went to him a couple weeks ago for the oh, first good. time and had a great experience. Good. Um, yes. Painful. Yeah. But, yeah, but good. Once you're you off bring the out table, the butter knife, Did you bring out the butter knife. The <laughs> oh, grass and so knife as release. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I was working on my pain face. Yeah. Um, but so do you consider him, uh, as your primary care giver for lack of a better term? I, I mean, Traditionally, we go to a, an MD, a medical doctor, mm-hmm. uh, as our as our the person we look to to solve a problem. That's just kind of historically we as a, as a society do. Right. Um, I have become less and less enthused with that, and and very frustrated with that myself, um, and have sought out people like uh, a sports medicine chiropractor, right, a good physical therapist, right, in place of the MD. Um, 
do you really put your emphasis with him? Yeah, you know, it just depends on the issue. You know, if I, um, you know, I was training for a running race, uh, you know, a year or so ago and, you know, kept getting Achilles tendonitis. So go in and get tuned up, you know, every week, get back out there and train again. Um, you know, he's not my primary care guy. You know, honestly, I don't see a doctor that often. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I would probably, and this sounds odd, I would look at my coach um, as my primary health coach, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, we look at everything, you know, I'm, uh, we look at cortisol tests, we look at <clears throat> sex hormone tests, we look at, um, intestinal, um, imp- permeability tests, things like that, where it's mm-hmm. like, well, um, we're trying to get things before they become a problem, right? Mm-hmm. I want to maximize my health. And in that way, um, I don't, I don't really need a primary care. Yeah. You know, I'm sure somewhere along the line, I'm 38 now, I'm going to be seeing doctors more some point in my life. Right? Sure. Uh, so I don't know. I don't really have a primary care person. It's just totally case dependent. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I've become a believer in that. Um, I, I, not, 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 not going to the doctor. I mean, if you, if you're having heart palpitations, the chiropractor is not the place to go, <laughs> yeah, right. but yeah. in terms of that maintenance, right. I mean, I, I pursued this last year to start when, uh, I was really wanting to kind of improve and prevent the problems of being on the job and prevent the 36 pounds of gear every day for a 25, 30 year career and getting in and out of cars and, and up and over fences and all that, right. that nonsense that we do. Um, I wanted, to, I took the stand of, I want to go do some preventative work here. And it was really inspired by Kelly Sturette and the mobility wide stuff and Amazing. how, yeah, how, um, you can solve a lot of those problems yourself, but I needed someone to kind of diagnose what, what may be my issues. I didn't know what I had. And even within, so I went and saw a couple different kinds of physical therapists, all sports medicine based or rehab based, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And each one of them, uh, had me do the little walking gait test and squat and all that. And then, the, and I would always talk about how my back was sore and my back hurt because our backs hurt. Uh, and they would, the answer was always, well, you got to strengthen your core. So go do sit-ups, go do crunches. And that's fine. I know my core needs to be strengthened, but I always felt like there was something missing and I'm at a physical therapist and I'm getting a very mild personal trainer kind of approach. And it took a long time, but I finally found a sports medicine physical therapist. Actually, he was a champion power lifter here in town. Okay. Um, but took one look at me and said, well, duh, no wonder your back hurts because the gun belt is pushing your pelvis forward and it's you're internally rotating your hips, which mm-hmm. for a visual, since this is not a visual uh, medium here, would be like sticking my butt out and up, right? I'm like, I'm arching my back and sticking my butt out. That's the gun belt causing that. <laughs> Um, that weight is causing my quads to overdevelop and putting a lot of pressure on my knees, which is why my knees often hurt. Um, and my quads are now super strong, super stiff, causing a lot of numbness. Um, but if you can imagine like two sides of a, of a coin or a rubber band, quads get strong, hips go up, uh, hamstrings get extremely tight as a result. And it's like stretching a rubber band to the point where it could break. And then you add that gun belt, which would be kind of pinching it in the middle and making that tension even more. Right. So he looked at me and in about five minutes figured out, well, no wonder your back is strained because it's got nowhere to go. You've got nowhere, no flexibility in your back because of all these other things. And that was a huge kind of aha moment. Okay. Finally, I found the guy who sees the bigger picture, you know, not just, I know my core is weak, but my core is weak probably partly because it's trying to hold this gun belt up and my hip flexors are collapsed, you know? Right. So um, that became a big part of my team is that, is that physical therapist. And then going to a chiropractor I found who mirrors that same approach. Um, I've been to chiropractors in the past. Chiropractors are very popular with cops, um, to go in and get cracked and adjusted. And then you kind of walk out and I, I always felt like it did some help, but uh, I've only just started this, but, um, in my times at Dr. Holt, there's never been any cracking or those sharp head snapping adjustments that still scare the crap out of me. It's yeah. all deep tissue, all muscle work. And both when I leave PT and I leave the, of a, a sports medicine Cairo, I can feel equal pressure on both my feet. 
and I'm placing equal. I, I don't normally do that. I put all my weight on my right foot because of just how I kind of want, you know, a wonky. <laughs> uh, but leaving there, I can, I can put equal weight on both my feet and I feel like I'm sitting up straight. My pelvis is tucked in. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that on my own. And I can do some of the, the preventative stuff, but I need someone. I can't really get to my psoas by myself. Uh, not without being accused by my wife of doing some really nasty things because <laughs> yeah. it's way in there. Honey, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, awkward conversations <laughs> to be had. Um, but yeah, to this whole idea of a team. Now, I mean, you mentioned a masseuse um, and your wife. Uh, I just, yeah, this this whole idea of building a team right now to me is... is you know, we're, we're all on teams. You've got a team at work. I've got a team. Obviously I go to work and I have a team. I'm, I'm the, uh, as, as the patrol sergeant, I'm, I'm the, I guess, quarterback of sorts of that team. Right. Yeah. And we go out every day. We have a common objective and a common mission. Uh, I get home. I have a team there. Um, but if you're kind of going to the gym and you're feeling a little listless or not really sure what you're supposed to be pursuing, or you've got these aches and pains that you aren't getting figured out, if you start building your team, about you and the common goal of your team is to achieve your ultimate and optimal health and wellness. Start building that team with that same goal in mind and you'll get there. Yeah. You know, when it comes to building a team too, I think the biggest thing is that you have to recognize that you need help and being able to ask for help, you know, is, we're is not really good at that. No, no, it's not. Uh, Guys in no, general man. really aren't good at asking for help. And then no. you add type A personality cops to the on the, on top of that pile. Yeah. And yeah, we're not big <laughs> yeah. fans of asking for help, you know. Right. And I understand it in some ways too because uh there's some expectation that we know right. everything. And 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 I know this is the case for me and others that uh because we're expected to be on point and experts out in the public that we have a hard time asking for help because of some idea of of showing a weakness. Even though I think asking for help is very courageous, um, the idea of asking for help I think scares people because it 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 might show a chink in the armor. Sure, and we're not you know we're not good with that. Right. It's it's tough. Yeah. But I agree. If 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 you're not if you're not getting where you want to go. Some outside perspective is going to help. A coach is going to do that. And then getting some people to really look at how you function and helping you improve that is going to be big. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you can hire, you know, the best coaches or put the best team out there um, on paper or, or, you know, by association. But the fact is, you know, if you're not willing to be vulnerable, uh, then it's not going to be very effective. You know, you have to be willing to be vulnerable because that's just simply where growth happens. That's where you get the down to the nitty gritty of, okay, this is really what's going on, right? Yeah. And, you know, working with private clients, um, you know, sometimes it's it's taken months, maybe even close to a year to get down to brass tacks with somebody. Mm -hmm. you know? Like what is really the underlying factor of what's going on here? And, you know, all jokes, you know, first months may just be joking around and things like that. And all of a sudden you, you get underneath that one a layer of onion and, and everything, um, unravels. And then you're starting to get some real progress and you can start moving forward. So I think, you know, anytime you look at, you know, asking for help, people will say, well, you know, I, I have a consultant or I have a coach and yeah, we meet, but yeah, well, is it productive? You know, mm -hmm. is there, is it effective, you know? And if it's not, are you truly allowing it to be by, by being vulnerable? And that's, that's a key thing when asking for help. It's not just, asking for help for the sake of asking help, but with right. the intent of actually receiving help and wanting it, having to be open, yep. needing to be open to it. Yeah. It's the same. Uh, I'll just, I, I, I see the parallel to, you know, a relationship with your wife mm -hmm. or my wife, obviously, right. Either one of us or anyone who's married. If you go through that relationship without your willingness to kind of show yourself or be yourself or allow yourself to be vulnerable, you're not going to have, an optimal relationship with your spouse. Right. And that's where the growth and the relationship builds with your wife or your husband or whoever. Um, that same is said of friends, yeah. you know, and, um, the, yeah, the willingness to be vulnerable, that's, uh, takes a lot of courage, 
but that's where that's where the the profit is that's where the juice is of, of really moving moving forward yep. i think uh, i totally agree man something i think i've probably only learned in the last couple of years is is the willingness to drop your ego and uh understand that um we all have things we can learn from other people we all have something to give um but shut your mouth and open your ears for a little bit and, <laughs> and really be receptive and take in what people want to want to do for you. Yeah. And that's a great point. We all, you know, we all have something to give to. I don't think people realize that, you know, like everybody has something to give. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, yeah, that's a cool point. That's, that's a really cool point. So in addition to the idea of building a team around yourself, um, this is another question. I'm, uh, I don't know where I got this. I think I got this from, uh, from Tim Ferriss's podcast, but this has fascinated me recently as I start my own, but do you have a morning routine? That you go through or, or, or a nighttime routine before uh, you turn in for the night? Yeah. Um, my morning routine is probably the most regular. In the days that I'm not coaching the, the 6 a.m. class, um, you know, I get up. Uh, I always um, like to start with some entries into a gratitude journal. I feel it gets me on a good positive note for the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what am I thankful for? You know, do you use uh, the five, is it the five minute journal is that what, or do you app. have your own? I just have an, have app. an app. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what the name of the app is. Uh, but it's quick, it's dirty, it's easy. It's yeah. just, you know, bam, I enter a man. I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? It's a, cool. It's going to be a great day. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then as the day in the morning progresses, I like to, um, I don't check email first thing. That's number one. <laughs> number one. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's the, uh, tough. then you're starting on someone else's, uh, to do list. Right. Uh, I like to get all of my creative or what I call flow work done in the morning. Right. The things that's when I'm fresh, you know, it's when my brain's fresh. So any articles I'm going to write, um, any program design I'm going to do, um, anything that, um, you know, is business development, you know, that's, that's new. Uh, I like to get that done early. Uh, and, you know, I'm usually up somewhere between, you know, the hours of five and six thirty AM. So, you know, fine. If I can get all that stuff done, <clears throat> I can make some progress towards some goals in that time. Uh, the rest of the day is, is, you know, it's fun. I can take whatever happens with it. I can go in, I can train, I can coach, you know, just kind of float around and, and help out. Um, and then in the evenings, um, you know, uh, we have a, we we'll, we tend to binge watch some TV shows every once in a while, uh, but we do have a pretty, you know, pretty strict cutoff of, of no TV or anything, um, electronic after 9 PM. So that's our goal. It's kind of wind down. Yeah. Wind down. We, you know, we start to read or, or just hang out, uh, talk, um, and, and just let things naturally wind down. You know, I respect um, quite a bit the cycles of the sun and the moon. You mm-hmm. know, it's our natural inclination to, we should be, as the sun goes down, we should start to wind down. Um, so, uh, you know, that's something that I respect quite a bit. Uh, other than that, you know, um, I can't think of anything. Those are the major the major routines I like to, to respect and uphold. Uh, Traver's got me doing uh, meditation mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And uh, I sense it will be ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> have you ever tried it? Yeah, I have. I, I meditate. Um, I don't do it. Uh, I do not meditate um, regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I usually meditate at times when um, I feel like things are maybe getting a little out of control. You know, I do go to it. It's great. I do it right here in my, right here in my house. Um, and uh, man, you know, it's hard. Yeah. It's a hard thing. And I think... Uh, when people start to understand the difference between their two minds, right. And there's the thinking mind and the observing mind. When people start to catch on to that, um, it's hugely powerful. Yeah. You know, and just the sake of, um, sitting down and and trying to not necessarily quiet one or the other, but just to recognize the difference between the two, um, is huge, you know? So I, I like meditation and sometimes, you know, uh, I combine it just with some stretching, you know, it doesn't have to be meditation doesn't have to be strictly Mm -hmm. sitting in a certain pose and doing it this way. And, having your hands here, right. you know, I think that's what people have a hard time with is like, you know, a meditation is anything that, um, gets you observing your own mind, you mm-hmm. know, whatever that is. And, uh, I, you know, I was, I, I always thought meditation was a crock. I'll be honest with you. Really up until uh, a couple of years ago when I was starting to hit some very stressful points and, uh, I get it. Now I get it. I'm, yeah. I'm totally, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was wrong. Um, 
apparently, you know, thousands of years of uh, people meditating has something to say. So, uh, yeah, I dig it. I think it's a great practice. Uh, I suggest people do it, but I think a lot of times people have to find it on their own. Yeah. You know, otherwise, they think it's just you know something. Wrong. I don't want to sit still for ten minutes. Right? It's not easy. It's not easy. Getting yeah, getting your mind just in a place where you're able to do it can be can be tough some days. Mm-hmm. And, or, just, or just finding a quiet space to do it. Yeah, can be hard, dude. I like I said, I got two kids who <laughs> yeah. are up. Yeah, you know, if, <laughs> way before the sun. Yeah, and uh, yeah, recently I've been even trying to. I, I try to get up even earlier than my wife who works from home uh, get up earlier than her. So I have like 45 minutes of uninterrupted time. And even then without a doubt, one of the kids wants to wake up early or, you know, has a potty break or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, people are looking for um, to start meditation. And the thing that helped me was I found a meditation center and I went for, it was just 30 minute uh, lunchtime sessions where they go and they lead you through it. You know, yeah. and one of them was, you know, focus on stress and it was awesome. I learned so much in just six 30 minute sessions. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, I, and it helped a lot because it's that, that environment is, is there already for you. Yeah. You know, it's set up, set up for you so you can find it. And it's just, uh, yeah, it was great. It was, I really, you know, there's meditation centers all over the place. So, and that gratitude journal, that's something else I've done. Uh, and I continue to do, I find a lot of value in that. Um, mm-hmm. I use, uh, I think it's called the five minute journal. So, yeah. so it's just a bound book. It's the same questions every day. You know, what I, I don't remember all of them off the top of my head, but you know, what, uh, what would make today a great, what are you, three things you're, gra- you're grateful for? Um, goals for the day. Um, you know, that, those kinds of things. And then those are meant to be written down in the morning. And then at night you go back and say, you know, what could I have done? There's, you know, two things I could have done better. Mm-hmm. Um, two things that went great. Um, that's helped me a lot with my, I guess, being present, you know, and then like yeah. you say, starting every day with some sense of uh, positivity yeah. and ending every day with not only some sense of positivity, but some knowledge of uh, how to move forward yeah. or how to make, how to make tomorrow a little better, how to tweak my reactions or my work just a little bit uh, so that maybe I don't repeat those same mistakes. And I have found yeah. that I'm better at not repeating mistakes if I do evaluate those things just for two minutes at the end of the day. I'm not perfect at it. Uh, spotty mm-hmm. using it, but I, I'm, I'm trying to get in the habit, but that's something I highly recommend to anyone. I'll uh, post a link in the show notes to that journal or even just get a blank journal at, uh, at the store and just write a few things down every day, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Garrett. That's really cool. Yeah. So another question I like to ask people, uh, cause I'm, uh, I'm a gear geek. <laughs> um, every cop is, we all like our stuff. Um, uh, I was trying to think of the name of it, but uh, we like to call everything tactical, right? Everything's tactical. <laughs> yeah, great word. And uh, <laughs> I had a, I had a, I can't say, I had a boss. Uh, we had a big operation this week, and um, uh, he actually asked me to pass him the tactical paper. <laughs> I was like, my, my breakfast was tactical. Tactical? Bre- <laughs> what is the tactical? Is that? Is it like black? It's like super yeah. low profile. I mean, I'm how is paper tactical? I was like, that's a bit much. Anyway, that's a long uh, detour from gear <laughs> and things. And um, gosh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm as I'm as guilty as anybody, and especially I mean, again, guys and then cops. But uh, we all love our stuff. Mm-hmm. What are some products or processes, or maybe like you mentioned, an app or supplements or apps or a website yeah. or a book or a membership that you're really uh, jazzed about right now. Yeah. You know, um, you know, two apps that I use and I don't think they're, um, uh, a secret, but one, you know, my fitness pal.com is something that I use all the time yeah. for my clients, for myself. Um, if you are serious about, you know, changing your body composition, if you're not, um, journaling your, your nutrition, then you're not serious. And that's just the fact of them. So I, I use that all the time. It's great. The other one, which has really helped me as someone who does program design for, you know, 20 plus people and different things. Um, I have an app called send it now where I can do someone's program design, uh, maybe from going on vacation and then I can have a time where it's going to be emailed out and it just goes through my Gmail. So I can hmm. send, it's going to be sent out. Like I, I do it all through the week, but it all gets sent out on Sunday morning at 8am. Right. 
uh, that has changed my game quite a bit because now I don't have to wake up, you know, or maybe I can take Sunday off and I know it's all going to go out. So uh, that's a big one. And then as far as, you know, everything else, I don't have a lot of gear, believe it or not, besides, um, you know, just my... Except my, that, aside from a gym full of yeah, gear. Gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got, got, all right. I got all right. You got me. Yeah, you got me. One. Yeah. I do have a lot of gear. I got, you know, bumper plates, barbells, I got some bands. 20, 20 belt. 20, 20 belt. Yeah, I got belt. every <laughs> size kettlebell you can imagine. Five of each. Uh, uh, I got my golf clubs. I got my sticks. Yeah. Um, but... You know, I do read a lot, and I know there are some books that I always recommend for people that changed my life and how I look at things. And, awesome. I love books. Uh, yeah, give me some. Yeah, I mean, it starts with why. Is, is Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek yeah. is just, you know, one of the greatest all-time books. Uh, really, especially if, you know, um, I'm a you know business owner, I'm a coach. Um, it just hit home on so many different levels for me, and uh, I recommend it. You know, I just gave it to Jeff, uh, our general manager, to read, and he loved it too. Um, the Power of Now. You know, we talked about meditation. And that's one where, um, you know, I read it and I think to paraphrase Traver, I realized that, uh, uh, everybody on this planet is crazy, <laughs> right? Something we're else. All, all we're our, all mad. Something uh, else our audience can relate to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. You guys really can. Uh, and then anything written by coach John Wooden has always been huge for me. Yeah, you're I think cool. that, that guy's, I'm a huge fan. I just love his philosophy on life and coaching and, uh, yeah, those are the three books or three things mm-hmm. I would recommend as far as reading. Uh, but I've read a lot. You know, I, I, I continue. I love to read. I think it's uh, it's free. There's yeah. another Simon Sinek book, good for our my profession and uh, especially good for supervisors. Uh, Eaters eat, eat leaders eat last. Mm-hmm. Right, that's another one to recommend. And I'll post your recommendations uh, in the show notes again. People Great. can go to the website and uh, there's a, there'll be a link there to Amazon. You can check them out and purchase them right there. In fact, I highly encourage you to do that because we're an affiliate link of Amazon and they help give us a little bit of, of funds back to help fund the the batteries and recordings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, one other one I'll throw in there too for um, men and even women who want to understand men a little bit better uh, is the way of the masculine or the way of the superior man. Hmm. Uh, it's a short read. It's one where you'll probably read about five pages, put it down and be like, holy cow, what just happened? I'll come back to that in three days. And then, uh, but everyone I've, I've handed that one off to is, is, is pretty mind blowing. And what was the name again? It is the way of the superior man, the way of the superior man. Yep. I'll have to pick that up. We were talking before Rick, we started recording about how we both have a habit of, uh, buying a lot of books and then they, <laughs> yeah. they stack up and they're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> my wife's not a big fan of my bad. I, I try to read as much as I can. Uh, I just have an appetite, much like my food appetite. It's my eyes are bigger than my ability to, uh, ingest all that stuff. So, um, I'll put that on the wish list uh, for a future purchase. Yeah. Well, thank you for, uh, for joining me here. I think, uh, it's great. We talked about, uh, how to pick a coach, mm-hmm. how to, how to align, uh, you, so, uh, and find someone who's got your goals and objectives in mind and how to, and the importance of, of being vulnerable and being really willing to evaluate your a point, uh, when you go find that coach, um, and that building that team uh, and the importance of that team, um, a little bit of routine. So uh, thanks for coming back on. I uh, would love to have you back on uh, another time, and we can maybe go down that wormhole of programming, and you can talk a little bit more about that All for anyone long. who wants to. Yeah, I know All you day could, long, brother. I know you could. We, <laughs> I would run out of recording space with how much <laughs> yeah. you would want to You enjoy that stuff. So, uh, yeah, well, well, maybe I'll just come over with a mic. And just turn it on and leave and let you talk for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, and, then okay. I'll, and then I'll come back up yeah. and pick up my That's gear. That's just my normal Tuesdays <laughs> anyway. So. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks All for joining right. us on The yeah. Squadron. Where can people find you? Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, where should they go to learn more about uh, what you guys do over at uh, CrossFit Pacific Coast and Gravitas? Yeah, uh, just CrossFitPacificCoast.com. And then GravitasLife.com is where the places you can find us. And uh, you'll find uh, ways to contact me there. Uh, any questions, you can email me at Eric. E-R-I-C at gravitaslife.com. Awesome. Yeah. Twitter, Instagram? Uh, not too big on those no. things, man. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Hashtags, I don't know. No selfies? No <laughs> selfies, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, yeah. man. Appreciate Thank you, it. Thank you, Appreciate it. Bye now.